was fed, but chains break out the weight of your glory. Oh, yeah. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you. My name is Olua Ronti Agby Davis. I go by Ronti. I know that's a tongue twister, but it's okay. Um, I've been at this ministry for about eight years. And I remember when I first came, my friend brought me to the ministry and Pastor Mike was talking about seeing with this and not with this. And he really taught me tithing. I mean, of course, as an adult, we know about tithing, but we didn't know the principles behind it. And from that very moment, I was tithing, not saying I had a big income, but I was tithing as the level I was at. And I remember maybe a few months later, Pastor Mike got sick. And I was like, hmm, I already know, just because of what he's taught me in those few months, I already knew he was gonna be okay. And mind you, I was just fresh to this belief. Yes, I went to church as a child, but Learning from Pastor Mike and Pastor Dee Dee, I was able to continue to come to the church even though he wasn't there. And I remember Pastor Dee Dee came on um, live. We saw a video and she was like, Pastor Mike is okay. Don't call, he's doing fine. And I'm like, I already knew that. Like it wasn't, it wasn't no doubt in my mind that he was okay. And mind you, I had all this faith from those few months of just listening to him speak, listening to her speak. And from that time till now, my life has completely changed just by what Pastor Mike and Pastor Dee Dee have been teaching. And I see the impact in my children's lives and all those I impact as well. And I, I don't think there's enough words to say how grateful I am. You guys have changed my life tremendously. And even last year, you blessed me with a car. And I know some people are like, oh my gosh, a car. No, it, it's more than that. It's that God heard what I was crying for, and Pastor Mike, Pastor Dee Dee, you were in a position to fulfill that. And I'm truly grateful. Um, my friends and family see the changes in my life, and you know those around me see it. And thank you for teaching me the Word of God. Thank you for teaching me faith. Thank you for teaching me tithing. Just thank you. And I can't wait to see what's next. I love you guys, and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Da, da. <laughs> hey, you know that's the way Pastor Mike do it sometimes. So if you don't know it or not, this is a pastoral staff takeover night, y'all. <laughs> this this gonna be incredible. This gonna be incredible. We taking over. <laughs> we done we done we done we done squatted. We we squatters tonight. We 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 took over this place. Man, I'm telling you, you sit back, you get your pen, get your pad, man. We're gonna have us an awesome time. Hey, 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 hey. I don't need no distractions now. Sit Lottie Dottie and everybody down and let's focus in on this, right? 
I, I, I know what y'all thinking about. I know what y'all thinking about, but that ain't, that ain't, but, but <laughs> later on. But right now, focus here. Keep your focus here. Let me see who out there. Let me see who out there. I see Teresa Proctor's in the house. Robert is in the house. Niecy's in the house. Jeanette's in the house. T is in the house. What's happening, Mo? Mo Better is in the house. Lynn, that's right, Lynn. Sit down, Martha. Martha, you're so busy. <laughs> Sit yourself down. Yeah, this is a pastoral take overnight. Uh, from Richmond, from J Richmond, Virginia. Who is that? Teresa. Teresa. Uh, what's up, Stephanie? I see Digna's in the house. Denise, D Denise is in the house. Uh, hey, we're going to have us an awesome time. It's going, we're going to laugh. We're going to be serious. It's going to be life changing. Y'all know that this is pastoral. I mean, this is our anniversary month. So happy anniversary to all the spirit of faithians. And then also it's a uh, pastor's appreciation month. You know, we always do that anyway, but on this particular month, we're just going to double the thing up. You know, the world is trying to, or people have already set this particular date, but we is doing this anyway. But so since they set this particular month for this particular time, we're going to double up on it anyway. How, how, what y'all say? What y'all say? What y'all say? Come on, let me see my double up people. We doubling up on appreciation. We doubling up on affirmation. We doubling up on song. Come on, come on, talk to me. Let me know that you're out there. Let me know that you're out there. And I want you to share because you care. Hey, let me introduce uh, the staff, the staff. Let me see, let me see. Uh, uh, let's, let's go down to, to my left here. Come on, Pastor Wayne. You got Pastor Jeff up in the house tonight, ready to have us an awesome time. How many, how many years you been serving uh, Pastor Mike? I've been here since day one. Get out of here. Day one, since we started the ministry, I've been here. Wow. So it's, it's been an honor to serve and uh, be a part of such an awesome thing that God has been doing through our pastor. Let, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. And I'm Elder Sonil and I'm the baby of the bunch. So I've been here for 14 years, man. And it's been 14 amazing years serving our man of God, serving the body of Christ and our great partners. And then I got the main apple scrapper right here. <laughs> Come on, talk to the people. Yes, Donald Grant. Listen, I'm a day oneer as well, and uh, it's been a great, great ride. I'm so appreciative of uh, our man of God in this time because we're going to have an amazing time on tonight. And then I got, ain't no woman like the one I got. Uh. <laughs> What's Hi, I'm Lisa Freeman, um, bone of his bone and flesh of his best. Product and of my intelligent product choice. Of your intelligent <laughs> choice. <laughs> and we've been here 29 years because we came, no, well, maybe 29 we, and a half. Just say day one. We, it's past 29, but just day one. Okay, day one. <laughs> and it's been an honor and a privilege to just be a part and to serve with Pastor Mike. You know, um, I want to I kind of like jump into... Um, what we're going to be, some of the things that we're going to be talking about on tonight. Um, and I'm going to give each y'all a, uh, a shot at it, right? I want to know, I want to know what is a lesson? Well, give me a lesson. You know, I know there's many, but give me a lesson that has impacted your life since being connected to uh, Pastor Mike and Dr. Dee Dee. Who, who, who go for you go first? Okay. Okay. The lesson that impacted, well, there are several, like you said, that impacted, but the one that stands out the most is when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, the lesson that stood out the most to me was he had taught this lesson on having confidence in the word of God. And you're talking about a time where you needed or I needed to know and have confidence in the word of God, that the word of God was true, that the word of God was capable of delivering, that the word of God would manifest healing in my life. If there was a time, that was that time. And I promise you, even to this day, I still have that series on a cassette um, in, in our bookcase. But that word was the word that ministered to me during that time. And that word is a word that I will always remember. And it's amazing that you, you stood there and you never cast away your confidence. Right. And so you say, and that was a lesson that, was a lesson. that helped catapult you. Into manifested healing. Wow. Can I, can I jump in? Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So like 
although although that lesson was vital to you, was mm-hmm. important to you, I, I wanted to piggyback on that because things that you overcame in mm-hmm. by standing through that storm, mm-hmm. you you don't realize or probably will never know the impact of the other people watching you stand as a result of that word. So even in my own family, when a challenge came, I always remembered how you would always say, it's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. And so it caused me to be strengthened and my wife and I to stand and get through some things. So I I just wanted to throw that in there. It was like, I know it impacted your life, but your stand also impacted the lives of so many other people and especially my house, you know what I'm saying? So- and that's, that's, that's powerful because this is what I do, this is what I do. When I go around and I'm, I meet different pastors, right? right? And I start off looking at the pastor, mm-hmm. but I always look at the people that's, that's close to them and then look at people that's yeah. around them. Yeah. Because if, if I wanna see if what's on him, on them. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? It, 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 it should not just stop with one person. Right. It right. should be some kind of transferal, perpetual, yeah, yeah. that will cause others to say, man, I, w- I want that. And, and just to hear Absolutely. what you said, that would. Absolutely. I didn't have a piece of cake, but I told Didi, I said, we're coming out and we're coming out running. Yes, and when she could not walk at one time, had the cane and I had to carry her and help her through some things. Man, you look at her today. Amen. You know, I mean, she Amen. walking, she getting it, she, she running, it. she working out. How, how about on the beach? Because y'all just came back. Well, well, she running saying, on the beach? Don't, <laughs> no, I, I ain't let her run too far on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I had to keep her a little close. You know? uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say y'all. We'll, 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 well, I'll you, come back to you. Okay. You got your lesson. And but. I want to jump in on that, too, because she said confidence, right? And I don't know if you remember, there was a shirt that Pastor came up with. It had a lion and it and said it, Godfidence, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. right? And so that confidence, you, you, in, that, in that word confidence, you have confide, like confide in. But a lot of times the confidence is like in you. But when he came up with that thing, Godfidence, is like some, it, it resonated with me, one with the lion, because you know, a lion walks a particular way. A lion believes a particular way. As a result, we, we call the lion, not the lion that called himself this, we call the lion the king of the jungle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so just his entire posture around having confidence in God, that thing has stuck with me like, like no other. Because a lot of times for my profession, I'm like the only honey brown person in the room, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I know I'm not black, but I'm honey brown, <laughs> right? And so when you step into a room, there's like this feeling that you get sometimes like you should be intimidated. But then I go back to just watching his walk. And that allows me to walk with the type of confidence that I should have. So that's one of the things I just want to jump in on your piggyback, on her piggyback. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I might well jump in on the piggyback, on the piggyback, on the piggyback. <laughs> you, you know, when you were talking about that line, I, I didn't know they had uh, an election. You know, like they voted to see who was the king of the, ju- the, ju- the jungle. The, how did the lion just jump up? And he becomes the king, king of the jungle. And he walks around that thing like he resembles all of that. Right. You, you know what I mean? And when you have that kind of confidence or confidence, you, you don't need no election. Nobody got it. It's something that rise up on the, big, right. on the inside of you that you have been confiding in your God yes, that causes you to hear some stuff that others can't hear. Yes, that yes, cause you to act a certain, oh, I, I feel my preacher here, come on. That, 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 <laughs> that cause you to act a certain way Absolutely. when everybody wanted to know how you're acting like that. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. You started something, but I'm good getting to the lesson, their lesson, yeah. personal lesson. <laughs> what, what, come on, come I, on. My, I, it's so many, but I think my, all-time favorite is uh, what faith in a man can do. Oh, yeah. Uh, Because I've watched, being a day oneer, I've watched his faith in action, and I've seen my faith in action. And that lesson, I listen to it today, over and over, because that word, that lesson, man, it is the key to us overcoming in life. All we need is a man in faith. Mm-hmm. 
and we got everything else. And that was that was that lesson right there was it was like one of like a hallmark. Man, you you yes, remember that? You remember yes, that? Yes, sir. It was yes. you can almost see it. Yes. But faith, you had Amen. faith plus a man Equal. equals. You you remember that? You, you remember? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's my favorite. You know. <laughs> and you said, well, and what else? I mean. So I mean, because it's it's really the key to life. I mean, in that lesson alone, if every partner would get that lesson regardless of where you are in your spiritual life, it will assist you. Because regardless of what's going on, cancer, uh, financial challenges, uh, marital challenges, relational challenges, what faith in a man equals to depends on us. And our man of God takes us through line upon line, precept upon precept, example upon example. All we have to do is do it. And if we complete the process over and over, regardless of what comes up in our life, what faith in the man can do will equal whatever our faith will allow it to do. Uh, that's amazing. Cool. So what's your, what was so, your, what's so, your lesson? So, I, I, man, I, <laughs> what, faith in the, what faith in a man can do was off the chain. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you mine, but I remember us going away with Dwight to, um, we went to Richmond, I believe, to hang out with some guys. And we went to some other guy's house who just invited us in. They had turned their garage into a man oh, we cave. We was at the football game. We, we was at a football game. Right, right, yes, right. I and we, we went over yeah. there, and uh, the guy let us in his house. You know, I think they had the game on or yeah, something. Yeah. And he was just talking. He was like, I know Mike Freeman. Yep. I know Mike Freeman. And we looking at this dude like, okay, calm down. We know him too. But he went on. He said, God will step over stuff. I mean, he went through the whole lesson, and I'm saying, man, that impact that that lesson had on everybody across this nation was phenomenal. Yeah. But but my 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 one of my favorite lessons that impacted my life was maximizing your season. Mm. I literally text Dr. Didi today at the end of the service today, the 10 o'clock, and I said, moments will define destinies. Mm -hmm. And I he he always talked about maximizing your moments. He talked about how seasons are periods of time in time, and what you do in this season will determine what you have in this season. And man, I have taken that thing and run with it. And if, if you weren't in service today, if you didn't get that, that word, you should go back because today alone, it was the importance of maximizing this moment that we were in because he gave us some instructions, he gave us some corrections, he gave us some encouragement, and for some it was even warning. Because the Bible says warning comes before destruction. If you go back and listen to the lesson, he said, I'm telling you, in a couple of years, this thing is going to be worse than it's ever been. And so that's a warning for some. But for, for those who are of the righteous, he said, we're not participating because we're not of this world system. He said, so it, we're not going to be a part of that. We're going to be hidden in that secret place in under the shadow of the Almighty he talked about today. So I'm like maximizing this season that we're in now. What we do today, we perfect what's in front of us so we can prepare for what's ahead of us. And it's wild if most people would, I mean, this is like, like these are like nuggets right yeah. now. You just drop them right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what faith in a man can do. And, and it's wild because it focuses on faith and a man. And notice God, because God has already done his part. You, you follow what I'm saying? And there, there are people trying to get God to do something he's already done. And God has said, no, I'm waiting for you to make a demand on what I've already finished Absolutely. so it can equal what I said. You, you know, and then you talking about maximizing your season. What, what you do today you going to live in tomorrow? Absolutely. I mean, what do you think about some people that are watching right now? Yeah. I mean, right now, they could be maximizing this particular moment because there's some nuggets already been dropped and going to continue to be dropped. And if they pick these things up and, 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 and make a demand on it, it's going to equal something That's in days to come. Well, <laughs> you pulling that mic up yeah, by yeah, your yeah, mouth. Go yeah, ahead and talk yeah, to yeah, me. Let me in. Let me in because I'm thinking about the initial interaction I had coming to the ministry. So we got here in like 2008. And at that time, I was going through a personal transition. I was changing my diet. I had heard from God to revamp my diet. And pastor was doing a, I guess a series with Dr. Dr. Dale. Oh, yeah. And he had said that he was not eating chocolate for like a year. And I was like, whoa. Because for me, 
the meat is not the issue. Mm -hmm. The sweets. Yeah, right, 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 I mean, right. <laughs> You know, I just, you know, the suites, they have my name, they got my social security number, they got my address. You know my name. <laughs> right. And I came out of that. <laughs> yeah, I was running to that. <laughs> but when he said that, I was like, it, it arrested something in me to let me know I was in the right place. Because God was telling me some things. And then for me just joining at that point, and then he confirmed just to his life so not necessarily a lesson but just how he was living yeah. and from that point until now it's like every interaction that i have with him whether it's pers well it's all personal because when we in the meeting it's yeah. just he and i yeah i don't i don't see the other people it's just he's talking to me and i'm talking back to him and every interaction has been that powerful where it's like it's arresting something in me and causing me to really walk the way God has called me to walk. Wow, it, it, it's, it's something because I look at, I look at you and, uh, cause you've been here how many years? 14. 14 years. And I look at you and I remember when you first came and then I look at you now. Mm -hmm. And it's like when we, when we started, when we started, we had Pastor Mike. Right. We had Dr. Dee. Right. So, so we, we just had those two. And all of a sudden now, we have embraced them. Right. He comes on the scene, he got past the mic, but he got a lot of, a lot of other models yeah, yes, that yes. can right. speed up his process. Right. You, you follow right, what I'm saying? Right, right, and sometimes right. I'll be saying, wow, well, I wonder if I've, man, well, when I came in the later time, but I'm glad I came in when I came right, in. Right, but, right, right. but you know what I'm saying? You, it's, like, it's like where you turn, you should be able to, you should, as long as you hanging around the ministry, you should always be bumping into him some kind of way. Right. You got more options. Got more right. options. Right. right. And it's made it so easy because one of the things that God told when I came here was look at the other people. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's specific what God told me. I was like, that's weird because most times it's like look at the pastor but he said look at the other people and I start doing that and it's like like you said everywhere I turn I kept bumping into Pastor Mike but that's when I look at the usher it was Pastor Mike <laughs> and you know the thing that I remember from the first service I came it wasn't his lesson it was the partner that sat next to me that I remember wow. man those partners loved up on me I could feel them I could hear yeah. them right now oh. And I said, man, if the partner was like that, I'm coming back just for the partners. I don't remember his lesson, but I remember the interaction I have with him through the partners. And that's how we know the partners. When he says your life is designed to minister to yeah. somebody else, yep. man, as a partner sitting in the seat, you're helping the lesson to have the potency that God designed for that lesson to have because it's impacted my life. And it's amazing that you know, you saying that because I, I had this thing is people may not remember what you said, mm -hmm. but they will always remember the impact that you have made right. towards them. And you had somebody that was sitting beside you that you don't even know their name. Do you, see, you know their name? I, I know their name. You I, know their name, I man? I know their name. You, 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 had a, you had an encounter with somebody that was sitting next to you that made an impact that you have never forgotten that. Never forgotten. You know, like if you go and tell, like if, if uh, um, you came and you said something to me and blah, 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 blah. Then all of a sudden, slap, and you slap me, right? right. Everybody gonna remember that, that slap. slap. They might not remember what you said, right. but they'll be able to tell you, man, he slapped him, boy. <laughs> and what did Pastor Wayne do after that? <laughs> nah, nah. Well, you was getting ready to say something, then you was getting ready, which, which one of y'all? Okay. okay, I was just, when you, you, it struck a chord when you were talking about Elder Sonil and when he came in, and you were, I think you made a comment like, you know, sometimes, because I talked about him having more options, but I just think about, man, the consistency that Pastor Mike has shown. You know, like 29 years, I personally have seen the bricks that we laid, like Minnesota Avenue, we all passing out flyers. Yeah. And his, his office was the health room, and sometimes we couldn't get in. 
and intercessory prayer, we would go and we'd get locked out. And he would stand up before the people and say, some of y'all not really proud right. of the ministry like you're going to be. You know, because we didn't have a home. But we, what faith in a man can do. Like he was operating in this from day one. So I've been operating. It made it easier for me to operate in faith from day one. Because yeah. he didn't start doing this when he taught what faith in a man can do. So the authenticity that comes from his life is what he saw when he came in. What I saw 30 years ago, 31 years ago, when I first encountered him in his ministry, it's authentic. So when he teaches, it's easier to grasp it because if you hold on long enough, you're going to see the fruit not just from his life, but you're going to see the fruit from your life. And he makes it so easy to walk in faith and walk in integrity and walk in character because when you practice what you preach from the heart, it makes it easy because people don't want to know how much you know. They want to know how much you care. Yeah, that's, why, that's, why, that's why I love the, these times of uh, celebration. You, you know, it, most, well, let me say this. There are some people who have to celebrate years. They celebrate just the years. I, I'm, I'm so glad that we're not celebrating, even though we know what year, 29 years. Right. We know the year, but we're really not celebrating the years. We're celebrating the consistency yes. of his serving, right. the right. consistency yeah. of his teaching, right. consistency right. of his integrity. Right. Right. Like John was just talking about, that, that consistency. Right. There are a lot of people, they have years, but they don't have a consistency. That's goat, he's goat status now. Huh? A yeah, he's goat, goat, he's there. goat status. Yeah, goat, goat means you've been greatest of all time in my book. You're consistently consistent forever. Man, I feel something. Man. You I, understand I, what I'm, I'm not, telling I'm you? Not, I'm not a feeler. I'm not a feeler. I'm telling you. I'm not a feeler, but I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you like I know my name, man. I'm fit. There is an anointing on what, and we just we we, we just, just talk, we just talking. Yeah, yeah, he's taught us that though. He said consistency is a key mm -hmm. to your success mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to stay consistent. Mm -hmm. But but I'm saying, not. Not every pastor is nah. consistent in their right. serving, consistent right. in their loving, right. consistent in their integrity, right. consistent in their teaching, right. you in follow their what I'm saying? In, in their yeah. correction. Right. There are some, cons and that's what we should be celebrating, yeah. uh, the work for the work's sake. Yeah. You follow yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, what, what, what are you going to say? Elder Donna took my word, the consistency, because I don't know if it was you or Pastor Mike, in one of the teachings, I think you all lined up a group of people and it was like, okay, this is a visitor or a guest or a person new coming into ministry. And it's like maybe five people away from that person. Say Elder Sunil is that person. And then we're the five people from them. And we're in between Elder Sunil and Pastor Mike. And it's like, what is this person going to get? Wow. Are they going to get what Pastor Mike has been teaching by the time he reaches Elder Donald or you or me or Pastor Jeff, what are they going to get? Are their options going to be good options? Because we said Elder Sunil had options right. when he came in, but those options, thank God, were all good options from the, the congregation right. through, through all of us. And so he is consistent and he's taught us to be consistent. So the option, the people don't really have options, if you will, when they're coming in as it relates to the integrity, the, the uh, faith and things like that. We're not given options because he didn't give us any. He's been very consistent. And so he's taught us to keep that same pattern of life. You know, the reason why I'm talking about and I'm, I'm asking them these particular questions, because it, it take you back down memory lane. It take you down back down memory lane. And watch this. Thoughtfulness thoughtfulness gives birth to thankfulness. Mm. You, you, I'm, I'm telling you, when you start thinking about uh, what an end of, uh, what someone, when you start thinking about someone and the impact that they have made upon your life, yes. and you start thinking, it causes now, it gives birth to thankful, being yes. thankful. Yes. And I'm telling you, that's what you ought to make sure you are consistently doing, not only just with yourself, 
but with your family. You should be telling your family some of the things that you tell Pastor Mike. You should be turning around telling your family the same thing, the same testimony you're giving him. You ought to give your children because you are that kind of model for your children and your, your children and your friends are going to honor and respect those you honor and respect. And you're going to see the power of God being released in and through their lives because you set them up. I, I was, I was, I was, uh, what, was you going to say something before? I was going to, uh, you know, there's some lessons that have been, and, and Elder Don had mentioned, you know, he got, he got ahead of my thought process, yeah. but uh, that's cool. But there are, you know, Pastor Mike make this statement, more is caught than taught. Right. More is caught than taught. Now, we talked about some lessons that he taught that impacted your life. But what is it? that he didn't teach that you caught that impact your life. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> man, man. How much time we got? Yeah, okay. yeah, all right, all right. Right. You ain't got to fight. We going to have our <laughs> <laughs> in like, this corner. <laughs> you know, around the ministry, I hear a lot of the partners, they'll say things to me like, man, you, you know a lot. You, you, you could, this, this man, uh, we call Pastor Mike, Dr. Mike, Apostle Mike. You, you can call him whatever you want, just as long as you call him. But he has taught me how to pay attention to detail. I mean, it's, it's like he can walk in a room and notice things that others don't see. Even, even if you try to hide like this bottle down here, you try to slide it back <laughs> and you think it's out the way, at some point, because his eye is so keen and it's so sharp, and he's so inclined to the voice of God, he'll notice that bottle sitting on that floor and, and ask you, okay, now why is that there? And you're thinking like out of everything he would have on his mind, in the middle of his lesson, speaking to the world, lives being transformed, he notices that bottle. So that's one of the things that has impacted me. And I, I, I go out of my way, I'll come in service, or even if I'm at home, you know, and I'll sit there and I'll look around and, and all you hear is him in, in, in your head saying, why is that there? Who's going to fix that? If not you, then who? If not you, if then not who? If not you, then who? <laughs> I had this conversation with an usher this morning. If not you, then who? Mm -hmm. And he got, the usher told me, he said, it was Cleo. Hey, Cleo, I know you watching. <laughs> I'm putting you out there. I brought the name. Yeah, I know. I called him out there. But he was talking about, like, the communion cups. And he realized that there were some things not in place, even though we didn't have communion today. He realized some things weren't in place. And he said, you know what? I learned something today. He said, because I'm thinking somebody else was going to take care of it. He says, but I'll never let that happen again. He focused in on some details of something that needed to be done that we didn't even have in place today. So I applaud that. It, and it's just perpetuated. So you caught that. And what you caught, you were able to teach. I, absolutely. So that goes along with it, uh, the theme of one of the things he's teaching. Right. So he can what? Make, make teachers. teachers. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what, what you did. But, but hey, y'all sit right there. Y'all sit right there. I got a commercial. We be right, right back. Don't you go nowhere. It was one. It was one time that uh, that that was fun. Yeah, wipe wipe me down real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, enough. So it was one time, man. They uh, we we were in Miami, and we were at this basketball game. And so we go, we go into the back, it's, you know, like little Great Goose Lounge, you know. Um, we weren't drinking, but it was the Great Goose Lounge, so we was having a good time. So, <laughs> and this is halftime, you know, all the ballers come back there. This is Miami. I don't know, some of y'all may not understand, some of y'all do, you know, but either way, we back there, we hanging out, we chilling, you know, you got Serena Williams over here, you got other people over here, you got Timberland. So then I, I say, oh, Timberland kind of cool. I'm going to say what's up with Timberland. So, so he, he's coming this way, you know, towards me and my dad. And I, I say, Dad, uh, hold my phone. I want you to um, get this picture. You asked so, Daddy to take a picture? Yeah, yeah, hold my phone. <laughs> hold my phone. Hold my, yeah. <laughs> get me right. So I, I hand him my phone and I go to say, hey, uh, Timberland, can we get this pic? He, he say, sure, man. So we're posing, and he says, um, we're about to pose, and my father's like, all right, y'all ready? And he and Timberland like, like perks up, and he can kind of hear his voice, and he's like, he kind of looking behind the phone, he say, 
hey man, you Mike, you Mike Freeman, man. And um, I'm sitting there kind of like looking at Timberland and it's, it's a, and my dad, he actually went to take the picture when they're like shaking hands. So the picture is of them two about to shake hands and I'm just standing there looking at Timberland like, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know this man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like what? So then Timberland, you know, going on and saying how he known him from TV and will watch him and, you know, all that type, uh, type of stuff, whatever. So I think that's when I, I said, oh, okay, he, he might got a little clout. He, 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 he might juice. be the man. Yeah. yeah, I remember just like it was yesterday when he said uh, God had called him and told him to start a ministry. And, and he left dad's church and, and he went out and, and did what was in his heart to do. And uh, maybe about a year or so after, uh, God began to speak to me to tell me to go and uh, help him. And I, I remember that day when I had to go to my father and tell dad about I what was God leaving. What God had told you to do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I remember that just, and I'm looking at his face, that was the hardest one of the hardest decisions I ever made in my life. And I approved it because I figured that that's where he wanted to be. And, and But all of them showed me faithful. Uh, both of them, they showed me faithful. And uh, Pastor Mike did things that you hope that none of the other ministers I could get to do. He'd go with me to visit the sick. He, and, and he'd go and visit them himself. I'm telling you, uh, we came and obeyed God and uh, began, to, began to help him. And I mean, he was so committed and had so much passion in what he was doing. I mean, it was just, it's just awesome being able to work with him to see what God has brought him from and, mm -hmm. and over the 25 years and, where, he's and gone. where he has, what he has stepped into. And I mean, it's just been a real joy working with him here at ministry. Man, that's amazing there. That, that, that is amazing. I, I, I still think about that passion that he had when I first uh, left from a dad's and, and connected. That same passion has increased even the more. 29 years later, that passion has increased. You know, some people as they get uh, down the road, they, they, they kind of back up off their passion. But man, he, he's still putting it in, man. Cause we got we got we got things to do. We got places to go. We got we got we got a lot of territory to cover. And I'm telling you, I just want to again thank our pastor for I mean the 29 years of serving, loving, integrity. Come on, y'all at home, y'all go ahead and put them claps together, put them hands together, put them hearts, put thumbs up. I mean, let your pastor know hey, that you appreciate him because as I said, as we begin to think about him and we start talking about him, being thoughtful, thoughtfulness gives birth to being thankful. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, we, 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 we had left off with Pastor Jeff and Elder Sunil had gave Pastor Jeff the okay because they, they were still doing a little tug of war about it. So let, let, let's hear what, what, you, what you say. Well, and, and this is a perfect segue because we just saw Josh and Brittany and Breland I think the lesson that stood out to me the most is the way he has loved his family and continues to love his family. Because for me, that was something that's been so personally important to me, but not necessarily knowing how to do it. And being able to see him do it, and I don't know if, if he's taught a lesson on necessarily like how to love your family, but his life has been that lesson. Mm -hmm. And to, to see the endearment that Dr. Didi has for him as her husband, not just as her pastor. Because you know, a lot of times you can have a title and you do real well on the outside, but when you come home, it's in shambles. But to see that demonstrated amongst the children, the grandchildren, Dr. Didi continues to resonate on a personal level with me so much it's helped me to be a better father, a better husband, a better friend, just, just a better man all around to being able to watch the lesson action, pick up clues, and then go practice it. 
Wow. Yeah, he, he, he's all he's always if I can jump hold your mic hold your okay mic. He, he's always he's always had this 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 constitution of his home I, I remember when we started out one of the things he used to always say and I'm, I'm sure he still says it for those who are up under his roof everybody knows where everybody goes I mean when he just says something so practical it was like everybody knows where everybody goes and we were my boys were little. We would always say that nobody leave out of this house without nobody knowing where you're going. And then he had two other things he would always share. He would always tell his kids and tell us. He says, think and tell the truth. He made those preeminent. They were key to the success of the rearing or the raising of our kids. Always think and tell the truth. And, and, and we have picked that up. I, I, everybody knows where everybody, where everybody go. goes. And we, like, if, if, if you go someplace, that I can't come to, right. then you don't even you don't need, need to be, be there. there. You, you follow what I'm saying? Because <laughs> right, right. Jesus said, where I go, you could be, now if it's a job, that's one thing. You could wait outside, but you know, because you can't come in. Right. But if it's over somebody's house and yeah. I, she go and they let her in, but then I'm knocking it, oh no, we don't let the husband yeah, in. Yeah. No, okay, <laughs> you better get yourself on out of here. <laughs> but but what, was, what was you going, yeah. what was you, you was I'll, getting ready? Yeah, I think the, the principle or the thing that I've picked up on him from day one is excellence. Um, from day one, because he understood his identity in Christ, he always protrude, ex even in the natural, his nails are done. His, and as a man, I didn't see that from another man right, growing up. Right. So when I encountered him, and even to this day, he, he's always excellence in business. I mean, where I've been able to ascertain in my career and financial endeavors, it really came from him because the excellence can't be compartmentalized. Once you become an excellent person, you're an excellent person. That means your trunk in your car resembles your major area in your home. See, the major areas in your home, you keep clean, but your trunk, no. But if you are excellent, you're excellent. So it's easy to be promoted like Daniel. So I pick up on that. And everything that I've seen our man of God do, whatever Pastor Mike Freeman's name is on, it's going to be excellent. Mm -hmm. So whatever my name is on, come on if I come from this house, it's got to be excellent. So he makes excellence an easy option for me personally as a man. Because when that's all you see modeled, that's all you know. Anything else is foreign and you feel out of place. Yeah. Following him has made me feel out of place in areas of my life that's not excellent. Because I got to look at him every week. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I got to look at excellence every week, either I got to put up or I got to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm still here from the very beginning, and my life is better 30 years later, so I think we on to something. Yeah, it, I mean, and, and it's contagious. Yes. You, you, you know what I mean? It, it's like the, the scripture, uh, you, you remember when he was talking about the excellent yeah. thing, he would say, O oh Lord, Lord, our Lord, 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 how excellent is thy name, name in all the earth. Right. And, and then, then, then what other scripture? He said, if, if my, my people, people, come on, talk to me. I name. called by my name. You're called by his name. And then what would he say after that? <laughs> back to, back to oh Lord, my, uh, our Lord, how excellent is, is thy name. name. What is his name? Excellent. excellent. Then my people be should be excellent. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was there. You got to embrace them lessons like it's your very own. You can't, you can't. There are a lot of people, they, they have head knowledge about what he said, but it ain't in your heart. Because right. you can tell when it's out of your heart. When, it's out of, when, it, when it comes from your heart, it's no longer, watch this, it's no longer Pastor Mike said. Right. It, it's right. I'm saying. Right. Right. See, right. see, if it's head, you know where you got it from. Right. Head, this Pastor Mike. Right. Them demons ain't going to look at me and say, uh, Pastor, Pastor Mike, Mike, I know. I know. <laughs> Jesus, I know. But, but. But who are you? Like, like, like we, we haven't picked you up on the radar yet. You know why? Because there are some people that's just coming with the head right. stuff. And I'm telling you, maximize a moment. What faith in a man can do. Confident. When you sit in this environment, that's why I don't even understand how people don't come together in this gap. Man, I'm, I, I, Lord Jesus, I can't, this, this, this is something else, but yeah. I, Look, wait a minute. Hey, yeah. Pastor Wayne, let's tell him. Let's tell him. Don't get it twisted. 
Because we've been here since day one, 14 years. But even today, he said, it don't matter if you've been here 29 years or you've been here one year. What's on the ones who've been here for 29 years? It's on the one that's been here one year. If you just join today, there's a, being a partaker of another man's grace. There's a grace that's upon your life just for hooking up with the vision. Oh, yeah. There's an ministry. acceleration. Yeah. Because just like uh, maybe probably probably El Donna, I think you drive fast too. You don't drive no, fast. I don't drive fast. Your wife drives fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah don't you drive don't drive fast. fast. You don't drive fast. <laughs> and we, Lisa, we don't drive fast. But these two right I'm here. I'm 55 they, they and alive. Look, you you know when it when it when it's raining what we call cats and dogs. Yeah. Uh, like if you go on, if it's not it's not raining, it's a good sunny day, and you you go on, you you kidding it? You get got to get somewhere. Raining cats and dogs. Do you slow down? Yes. Oh, you was, but he he said nothing. Absolutely, over here. you slow down. Ah, cause because I mean I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive a little different. I, I'm gonna keep my pace but I'm not driving above what I should from the beginning. So I don't have to really make some adjustments. I ain't speeding. I just want to get to where I'm going. And if I got to get there by a certain time, I'm going to make the proper so, preparation. So if you're, doing 70, if you're doing 70 and it's raining cats and dogs, do you, do you back it up a little bit to 55? Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, I'm okay, okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Well, well, my, point, my point is this, my point is this, my point is this. Those who are coming in later, it, it should be a clearer picture for them to accelerate. No oh, yeah. you, you follow there's, what I'm saying? There's no fault. We've ta because, see, it becomes more believable, if you will, when you see others doing it. The principle is the same, but you can do it different ways. Right. Yeah. So you, there's, no, there's, there's no real confusion because it gets clearer and clearer the more you see other people accelerate because we've already taken care of a lot of the smoke. Like when you come in now, this ministry is a well-oiled machine now. If you'd have came in 30 years ago, we had a well-oiled confession. Right. We were on our way, oh, but we good. were operating in excellence at the level that we're now. God did what we believed. He brought people from the north, south, east, west. Man, our man of God has been able to train them. He has things in place. So now when you come in, why shouldn't you accelerate? Wow. The stage is set for your promotion. Mm -hmm. We all on one team. It doesn't matter the minute you become a partaker of that man's grace. We all become a partaker of the same grace, yes. and you individually get to tap off of it. So you get a double. You got house grace and individual grace. Come on. Isn't Come on. I mean, it's, Come it's, on. A, it's amazing, and, and, and it's like, like, why don't you hear and obey? It's like you should ask yourself this question. Because if he's pastor, if he's pastor, if he's your pastor and you submitted to him, why don't you hear and obey? And you should be asking yourself this question. Watch this. What's hindering me from obeying? Mm -hmm. Because nine times out of ten, most of what you hear, you ain't in a disagreement with it anyway. The problem, the disconnect is with, with your behavior. And, and, and now you ought to ask yourself this question. What is hindering me from obeying what I heard when I left, when I was sitting up in his presence. And I'm telling you, you start doing it because if it works for us, it'll work for them. Yeah. God has no respect to person. Right. What he does for one, he will actually do for, it'll be done for another. And you know, one of the greatest tragedies of the civil rights era is the fact that the, a lot of the people who walk with Dr. King didn't recognize they were walking within a history-making event. They didn't realize they were walking with a history-making man. Right. And so in that first Thessalonians, it, in, in the New King James Version, chapter five, it says, recognize. Oh yeah. And if you're not able to recognize who you with, you're gonna mismanage the moment that you have. Mm -hmm. And so it's imperative that, like, I wouldn't want to be on a team and everybody's advancing and I'm not. Because if, if multiple people are advancing, that means it's working. Mm -hmm. And when, what you're hearing here, you can't come into this accelerated process 
and speed up the trajectory that you had that God gave you. And so, it, but it first comes with recognition. You have to recognize, like, like we were saying, go to the end of 2022. If you went 25 years in the future and see what's being written about this moment and how SOFCC under the leadership of Pastor Freeman has led this, this army of people through this time, you would change some of your behavior today because you realize, man, we are part of something great. Right. And that's the, that's the recognition that all of us should have. So when they say, man, the doors are open, man, we should be diving for the goal line to get in the door because we recognize we are in a God-ordained moment. My caught lesson is servanthood, how he serves, how he serves his family, how he serves the congregation, how he serves. Now, I'm a servant at heart, and often when he says, he'll sometimes say, can nobody outserve me? And in my mind, I'm going, I can, I will, I'm going to, and it's like, in my heart and mind, it's like this competition because you watch him do so much and his heart is so for the people and seeing people su succeed. Because he often say the, the, even the measurement of this ministry, the success of this ministry isn't by the assets of the ministry, but it's by the transformed lives of the people and the success of the people. And so my heart or what I'm catching from him in those areas is always one, be mindful of God's people, his most precious commodity, and always have an attitude of servanthood. Yeah, and, 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 and that's one, that's, there, there are so many people struggling and striving to be great. Mm -hmm. They, they want to be successful. Right. And Jesus kind of laid out the way to being great. Mm -hmm. And he told them, if you want to be great, yeah. serve. Mm -hmm. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? And there's so many people, you missing out on something. That's why I don't understand how people can stay home. Right. I, I don't understand. If you're in driving distance, if you're in driving distance, you should be in the place. And be, be, watch this, because there you have a gift. There's some serving that wants, that needs to take place here. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about out there in the world. There is a there is a part that you need to play with your man and woman of God when it comes to in-house stuff. I'm talking about us serving one another, encouraging one another, loving one another, fellowshipping with one another. I'm not talking about outside. I'm talking about inside between us and you need to make sure if if he's your pastor you want to be in the place he pastor mike already said that one sunday out of this month of right. pastor appreciation right. he want lottie dotty and, and everybody to uh to attend to, to, attend. to, to attend to make an all expense paid trip, trip yeah. to come here to come here whatever it costs you to get here get here whatever service is closer to you 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 attend it, it's something because when you said about that first thessalonian I had been looking at that on yesterday, and I mentioned it a little bit on it. But when it says recognize, that means to identify yeah. and to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And what am, I, what am I identifying? What am I acknowledging? What am I recognizing? It, it, it says those that labor among you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those that labor among you. If they're not laboring, that's why I said we don't just serve him for years sake. We serve him for the consistency of yeah. that laboring. Yeah. You, you follow? Because that's what we should be looking at. Because if more is caught than it is taught, that what I see you doing, you, sometimes you don't even have to tell me. I've been around you so much and I see it. I, I, I just adapt that same kind of behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Because your life is the greatest teaching tool that you possess. Mm -hmm. So if your life is the greatest teaching tool that you possess, and your being here was designed to minister to someone else, you need to be in here so that you can be taught properly and consistently so you can continue to grow. Because, because I, I've heard pastors say this, whatever God is involved in, it's always growing. If it's not growing, it's dying. And you could literally become spiritually dead or uh, stagnated by your not being here to be fed properly. You know, like we've we've talked about some lessons that we received and we've learned over the years, but but the most dangerous place in the world to be is to be where God used to be. That word that got us through then may not be the word to take us to the next level. It will sustain us 
it will uphold us. And it's the word. It's forever increasing and evolving in our lives and causing revelation to take place. But I can't go back to what faith in a man can do and miss out on the fact that he's telling us now, make Jesus Lord, deny myself, and be led by Holy Spirit. There's a new level of increase, and there's been a shift that has taken place. And so we want to be able to ride that wave and shift and flow with him because we know he's being led by the Spirit of God. Man, you know, uh, I was, uh, years ago, I had to, to I'm, I'm, I'm on that more court than it is taught. Uh, we used to go down California, and Pastor Mike was walking around on the stage. And I'm saying, like, like what are you doing? Right. And everybody, you know, everybody mingling after he, he walking around on the thing. And he, I was like, what you doing? Mm -hmm. He like, uh, I'm getting ready for, you know, when I teach down here. Yeah, oh, wow. I remember that. And, and now, you know, he, he going over his, his lesson, right? Mm -hmm. So some years later, I was invited to go teach at this particular uh, ministry, right? And when I went down there, it was a devil on this side and one on this <laughs> side. And, and one of them told me, look around. Look at all these people in here. And the other one said, what you doing here? You are going to look like the biggest, oh, we're going to make. And when they sung the song, because I knew I was supposed to be coming up next. They, 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 they said they're going to sing this song. After they sing the song, uh, he coming. It was, like, it was like something came over me. And back then, I, I knew what it was because God helped me out with it. He said, you always tried to do, teach a good lesson. You always wanted to make sure you did the right thing. Right. You said the right thing. You, you, you wanted to do good. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there, and that, 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 that pressure of to perform got on me. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, while I'm sitting there, I'm listening to them singing, and I got that image of him walking around. Now, I'm sitting, I, man, I'm telling you, if I could tell you, I was shaking. And then and, 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 and all of a sudden, I could say, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. And I just closed my eyes and I saw myself teaching that lesson. Come on. I'm on that dude's stage. I saw myself teaching that lesson. And all of a sudden, when they called my name, Come I mean, they, they called my name. <laughs> <laughs> man, I got up out of that seat. And when I got on that platform, man, I'm I own that thing. Because yeah, yeah. I saw myself there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just grabbed hold of what he said. And when they told me, who well, doesn't your brother invading oh, on our, how the world are you going to invade? You a newcomer. Table. If you're going to sing it, you got to <laughs> sing it the right way. <laughs> Come on. He called my, you call my name. Hey, he hey. Said, and I ran out of that. Okay, hey. I'm not supposed to say that. I'm already out of order. No, nah, no, nah, see, you might as well sit there. But, 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 it's, but I'm saying, man, I got up and I'm ministering. And this is what the pastor said. The pastor said, man, you got up there. And you own that thing. Yeah. 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 But but you know the thing is, Pastor Wayne, all of what we've been saying are the things that he has been saying. Mm -hmm. Because that is rehearse yeah. your response. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Eladon, you know this from, from your ball playing days, you had this thing called a walkthrough. So you practice the plays. On game day, you don't, you know, you don't exert yourself, but you walk through all the plays that you're going to do at that particular time mm -hmm. is simply rehearsing your response. So what we've been doing is just picking up from his life, what he's taught and then what he's modeled. And we've been rehearsing the responses and now look at the results. Man, people are calling for you from all over the world. Yeah, and the wild thing about it, when you get a hold and you discover your value, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When you discover your value, and you're, no, nobody ain't gotta tell you, when you discover that thing, I'm telling you now what I'm doing now, when I, I wanna add value to people. Yeah. I wanna add value, that's, that's why with, even with Pastor Mike, man, I'm connected with him, why? To add value. He has value. He added to me. Well, I got value. I need to add. And if Lottie, Dottie, and everybody start adding value. God told me this. He said, Dwayne, I want you to add value this way going up, and I want you to add value going this way. Yeah. He said, I want you to grab hold of the partners, add value, add value here, and then bring them two en entities together, and you're going to see an explosion, man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Let, let the, let the, let the, let's see what the young minister has to say. I love it. First of all, thank you for letting me crash, but this is amazing because it's one of the things that Dr. Mike, one of the many things that he has helped me with in my life, um, which has caused 
like it to grow exponentially, which is finding my identity in the word. You know, we, the world says find out who you are, but it's not about finding out who you are, it's finding out who you are according to the scripture. So for me, it's caused me to be able to vision cast once I found out who God said I was. I knew I was enough to stand on any stage. I knew I was enough. I knew I should have been on certain stages, not because I needed to be famous, it's because I had something to say. I had something to sing. So for me, once I really got in the word, and found out who God said I was, not who man said I was, but who, what was my identity? Who did he call me to be according to the scripture? I didn't need to be prophesied to. I didn't need to go to and, and, and pay and get a, a cloth that had a certain dip in, or I didn't have to. I could go to my phone, go through the scripture and find out who God already preordained pre me to be and predestined me to be. And when I did that, my life and you know some uh, past him when when you discover who you really are yes sir you will find out who you're not yes sir and at the same time now you don't have to try to be somebody else because why try to be a carbon copy of somebody when you're original yourself <laughs> man come on it's a, man it's a confidence it's a confidence like that's what we it. talked about early yeah, man yes, yes. <laughs> flesh and blood give it to me give it to me you walk around with the spiritual boldness it, it, it's not rooted in man. It's not rooted in, in materialistic things. It's rooted in a spiritual identity. Yes. I'm a spiritual being living a natural experience. And when I realize that, I, I realize I walk in the room and I'm never alone. I walk in the room and I've got angels with me. Yeah. The way the system and the algorithm was set up, I'm already set up to win. Come on. So it's like I walk in, it's like... It, it, it's not arrogance, it's confidence. That's why there's going to be a great explosion that's going to take place. And I'm telling you, man, I saw where doors open up this way. I ain't talking about going back this way where people leaving. I saw doors opening up this way and there was a flood of people that was coming in. And God was saying, there's, there's about to be uh, people, they're going to be coming, running into because they, you're, not, you're not just going to be talking like some have done in the past. You're going to be talking and then you're going to be demonstrating the, the, the things that you've been talking about. And it's going to be the demonstration that's going to get their attention that caused them to really crowd because they've been looking for this Jesus that we've been talking about. But we haven't been demonstrating this Jesus that we've been talking about. But I'm telling you the day and the Today and days coming, you're going to see people more and more because you're going to find out your value. Elder Sunil talked about those guys in the civil rights movement. They was around Dr. King and they didn't know who they was around. Now, you don't have to have that kind of testimony. You have an opportunity now. You know you're around greatness. And let me give you, give a, give you a hint or a clue into something. God would never connect you to something that's great if greatness wasn't in you. And so what I'm telling you, I want you now to bring your greatness and connect your greatness with, 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 with the greatness that's in Pastor Mike and Dr. Didi. And let's see a great explosion take place here in the body of Christ, man. <laughs> hey, we ain't out of we ain't out of we ain't out of uh, uh, word. We, we may be out of time. But let me let me say this. Let me say this. Uh, they had a meeting today. Uh, Pastor Mike had a meeting and Dr. Didi and uh, Pastor Kevin. Uh, with the blaze uh, reimage, right? So many people came out. So many people came out, and on behalf of Pastor Mike and Dr. Didi and Pastor Kevin, uh, they wanted you all to know. Thank you all for coming out today, and then uh, we want to let you know it's not too late for those who want to uh, participate. It's not too late. Uh, there should be a a uh, website or something, a link that's going to come up on the screen. I want you to go ahead and take a screenshot of that. You take a screenshot of that and uh, you contact them uh, by email and we'll make sure someone uh, get in contact. I'm, I'm telling you, man, there's an explosion taking place and you want to be a part of it. You don't. Dr. Didi said something this morning. You either going to regret or you're going to rejoice. And we want you to be on the rejoicing side. Hey, let's give us something in closing. What you got in closing? Uh, I was sitting here thinking about Pastor Tim and what he said. The Bible says over in Proverbs 28, 1, it says, The wicked flee when no man pursue, but the righteous are as bold as lions. There is a boldness that comes along with you being hooked up 
to this ministry. So come on, get in here and get involved. Stay connected. What you got else in there? Man, I want to stay right there in Proverbs. You know, in Proverbs 4, it says, in all of your getting, yeah. get understanding. You've gotten a pastor. God handpicked, heart picked the pastor that you have just for you. It's like a, a fine tailor-made suit. It fits you well. If God has connected you, he, he's done all that he's done to connect you with this great past that you have, now you must get some understanding. How to flow with your pastor is very easy. Just do what he says. Uh -huh. Elder Donald, what you got? I was gonna say, in honor of Pastor Appreciation Month, one, one thing that I take from our man of God, he is the biggest provoker I know. The Bible says we're supposed to provoke each other unto good work. So whenever I see him, he provokes me to do better. We should live our lives to provoke people to do better. The only way we're going to provoke people to do better is for us to do better in our relationship with God, listening to him and obeying him. And we have the greatest example here that will show you how to do it. So let's get in this thing and let's make it work so we all can win. What you got, Lisa? I would say the word of God says he's given us pastors after his own heart. And we truly here at Spirit of Faith have a pastor after the heart of God. He loves the people of God. He honors the people of God. He demonstrates the word that he teach and he lives an integral life. And so even if you're there out there and you don't have a pastor and you've been listening to us, Hey, I present to you, Dr. Mike Freeman. <laughs> you know, it, it's something because you said earlier that those who, uh, one of y'all said, those who were here before and those who came in, if it was, uh, oh, that, that was you, they, they get the same. So when we was closing out, I was going to omit uh, the, the, the new uh, <laughs> intruder that we had, but since, but he came in, so you said, he, you, you set it up for him to be able to give us a closing. <laughs> oh man, thank you again. Uh, I mean, hair raggedy and all, but listen, we are sitting and um, we are viewing the product of a keen connection to the Spirit of God and to Holy Spirit. So I actually wanna take this time and decree and declare everyone watching, everyone sitting among us, that your ear will be intensified, your vision, your seeing, and your connection with Holy Spirit will go times 10, times 50, times 100, and it will increase like our man and woman of God, so you will begin to see the fruit and abundance. Come on, type in the comments, I receive, my hearing is sharpening, my vision is sharpening, and not just when you see it, you'll just internalize it, but you'll write it down. There's a biblical principle attached to seeing it and putting it on paper, so then after after you put it on paper, we will then see it manifest things in your finances, things in your family, things in your fitness and your health and your thinking and, and all the things attached to you will grow when your hearing increases and subsequently your vision increases. Write it down and watch it come to pass. You know, uh, a guy asked me about six months ago, he said, man, you've been with Pastor Mike and I mean, you've been faithful with this dude. Give us uh, Give us some things that cause you to, to stay that way. And, um, and I said, update your value. He said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You said it so fast. I said, no, just update your value. And, and some of y'all, what you need to do is update your value. You know, when you first got connected, oh man, he was the, uh, what they call it? Slice, best slice, thing since best sliced thing bread. since sliced bread. That's an old timer one. But the best thing since sliced bread. You, you follow what I'm saying? Because cause you saw the value. Now, now all of a sudden you've been around and you let your value drop. You update everything else. You update your phone, you update your computer, you update this, you update that. Once you update your value, and I'm telling you, you update your value, you're going to see some things update and increase in, in and through your life. And so, hey, again, this has been an amazing, and we, we still not finished, but this has been an amazing month. We're celebrating the 30, 29 years uh, spirit of faith. So a happy anniversary to all the spirit of faithians. And then we want to shout out uh, to our pastor, uh, Pastor Mike and Dr. Didi. Happy Pastors Appreciation uh, Month. We love you guys. Hey, don't go nowhere uh, because
if you don't, if you haven't received Jesus, the Lord and Savior of your life, I want you to make Jesus Lord on tonight. At the lower part, lower third, you'll see SOF Connect to 51555, and you go ahead and follow those instructions, and I'm telling you, someone will get in contact with you for salvation, Holy Spirit, and you want to partner up with the teaching ministry of Mike and Dee Dee Freeman here at Spirit of Faith Christian Center. You go ahead and uh, follow those instructions are right there on your lower third. And then I want you, uh, our first time guest, I want you to go ahead and type in number one. Let us know this is your very first time being a part. We're going to give you so much heart, so many hearts. We just want to let you know, hey, you're in the right family. You're in the right connection. Hey, you are family now. And so go ahead and type in a number one so we can show you some love. And I want everyone to give on tonight. I want you to give on tonight. We have secure ways for you to give. In the lower thirds, you'll see them come up. You have PayPal, S-O-S-C-C, Good Ground at gmail.com and then you have a uh, cash app cash app is s-o-f-c-c -C, good ground and then you have uh text to give you got text to good ground to seven three two five six you'll see it in the lower third they're strolling go ahead and take a snapshot of it i want you to sow your because you're sowing into good ground and whatever you make happen for somebody else listen to me child of god God Almighty said he'll make it happen for you. I want you to sow into uh, No Lack Nation and then those who haven't had an opportunity or you want to sow again into Pastor Mike's life, you see the Zelle information on uh, the screen and I think they may have cash app, but if you do cash app, put gift at the, uh, you know, in the, com huh? in the memo comment, okay? And type gift there. Uh, but if you have Zelle, go ahead and do the Zelle over the uh, cash app. All right. And, huh? and then we have Wednesday noon uh, day Bible study in Baltimore. Baltimore, we coming. We coming. You've been asking. Hey, you better show up. 12 noon Bible study. Pastor Mike. And then we're going to be back there at 7 p.m. We want to see Lottie Dottie. Invite somebody. Tell somebody about those particular Bible studies on Wednesday night. And then we'll be back here Sunday at Temple Hills at eight. We'll be at Brandywine at 10, Baltimore at 10. And then that's the Sunday for Echo? Yes, Echo. And then Echo at 12, back down Temple Hill. Man, I'll tell you, it's going to be an exciting week. And we decree that you all will have the best week that you've had even up to this day and up to this time. Hey, I want you to begin to tell your children, tell your friends about, hey, your pastor. You know, it's scriptural. It, it ain't, this ain't something foreign that I'm saying. Do, do the Bible. You know the woman that met me and Jesus at the well? That girl talked to us, man, and when she left there, she left a pail there. She went back and she said, you need to come see a man that told me things, and they came. And what you need to do is leave and go and tell somebody about the, your pastor that spoke a word into your life, that changed your life. Tell your children that so your children can see the transformation in your life so they can want the same pastor, the same God that you all been serving the whole time. Uh, we got a video too? No, we showed, showed the video. And then what about the, uh, uh, the Faith album. City? No, listen, y'all do not want to miss the album release. Well, let me go. Uh, I'm trying yeah, because you up. changed the date. Yeah, yeah, that, we, yeah, we changed the date. I'm gonna wait to give them the next guest artist. We we gave them one know, guest today, right. but we changed can we, the can date. Can we give to them October. that the one you gave already? We, okay, yes, sir. Okay, we gave JJ Hairston will be at the release concert. You do not want to miss it. It's free to the public. We will have advanced copies of the CD. There's a link that's going to go out because I want you guys to make sure that you reserve your place. This place is going to be packed out. And we're already preparing for overflow, so do not miss it. It is October 27th. That's Thursday, October 27th, starting at 7.30. The doors open at 6.30. So get early. If you're a partner, I want to make sure you have a good seat. So please prepare so we can party like we want to. Hey, and then, and then all of you all have social media. All, all of you all have been doing your thing. Go ahead and, and, and on tonight, tomorrow, uh, tonight it would be better the day you hear his voice don't harden your heart so to, to, tonight I want you to share something about 
your man of God on your social media. T tell somebody about how your man of God has changed your life, uh, what you picked up, what you caught, and, and go ahead and testify. And then at the bottom, give them the times of services that, that they can be a part of. I want you to do that. I'm telling you, if it has blessed your life, it would change somebody else's life. Again, hey, I want to thank you all for assisting me because I wouldn't have been able to do this takeover by myself because I don't think I would have been able to do it. But since I had some, 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 some help, you understand, I was able to be able to, to take over. So the pastoral staff takeover was tonight. Well, hey, I, I didn't get my letter of request, but I, I decided. Yeah, I well, you just, you just took forgot. Over. It got lost in spam. <laughs> it got spam, but I decided to come on through anyway. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, we'll see y'all. Uh, uh, let's take it. Let's let's see what uh, Pastor Tim and Faith City Music has to say.
Keep 